I learned something this week while researching Brook Lottie that I think some of us may have already assumed. Making whiskey is apparently very close to making chemical weapons. This is Brook Lottie, the classic Lottie. Let's get into it. Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary where I do the research to try to teach you a little something about what you're drinking. Tonight our dram of choice is the Brooklotti Classic Lottie and so I want to teach you guys a little bit about the Brooklotti Distillery. Now it's a fairly small distillery on the shores of Loch and Dahl and it was founded by these guys named the Harvey Brothers. There were three brothers, they all kind of took it upon themselves to run this business, they got a bit of an inheritance from a couple of other distilleries that their family had owned, but the three of them brought something different to the table. One of them got, you know, the finances, one of them started up the, the distillery, other one kind of worked on the marketing, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So in 1881, this distillery was founded. Now the deal with Brook Lottie is that they have these three different, you could almost think of them as brands. They have Brook Lottie, which are a range of unpeated whiskeys. Then they have Port Ellen, which is a range of somewhat peated whiskeys. And then they have Octomore, which I think a lot of you guys will probably know that name, whether you've tried it or not. If you think, you know, Laphroaig is, is peated, you should try some Octomore. Very heavily peated whiskeys, so very smoky. Now, Brook Lottie is heavily into their marketing and Specifically, they just believe in Scotland, or at least it seems genuine when, when I was looking into it. Maybe it just means they have good marketing, but you know, I've met a couple people from the Brooklady Distillery. They seem like they really love what they do. So they're all about Scottish barley. And they're all about using this Victorian era uh, machinery to make their whiskey. It's all pressure, it's all gravity fed, and in general, it's just very low tech except in their office where, you know, they have about the only computers that they have, which is really just for bookkeeping, you know, web stuff and whatever else they need. But also they have all these webcams, or they did anyway, they kind of don't have those anymore. However, back in 2003, they certainly did <laughs> because in 2003, they got this interesting phone call from the Defense Threat Reduction Agency in the US. And this call said, hey, you know, one of your webcams is down. It's black, it's not working, something like that. Brooke Lottie said, oh yeah, you know, minor technical issue, we'll take care of it, don't worry about it. But why are you guys calling us? You know, why are you watching us on, on a web webcam? Is something going on? Or is, you know, are we gonna get invaded through, through Isla? And uh, they said, well, actually we use your webcams to teach our agents how to identify when chemical weapons are being made because distilling whiskey is very similar to distilling a lot of the chemicals that you're gonna need to make these weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> so uh, of course, Borkalati being the intelligent marketers that they are, put out a whiskey called the Whiskey of Mass Distinction and sold it under that name for a little while. So pretty smart. There was also another event that happened pretty close in uh, where this uh, fisherman from Isla found a uh, underwater ROV, which remotely operated vehicle from the uh, Ministry of Defense from the UK. And you know, when he found this thing, there was big you know deal like, why is there a submarine here? Are we getting invaded? Whatever. And so Brooklady took the opportunity to make a similarly colored, except yellow, just you know this pastel yellow, uh, called the Yellow Submarine, and they sold that for a while. So let's talk about. Brook Lottie, Classic Lottie. Now this is a 50% ABV, non-chill filtered, non-colored, uh, just unpeated, delicious scotch. And they say that this color blue here, um, this is obviously an iconic bottle. If you've ever seen it on the shelf, it's, it's hard to miss. They say this is the color blue of the ocean right outside of the distillery. Kind of surprising actually. I would have thought that the water would be a lot darker color. I haven't been to the area, so I have no real way to refute this. The only time I've ever seen water this color is in the Caribbean though. So either way, pretty cool. So let's go ahead and pour some of this and see what we think. Now, I will say Brooklady is known, or at least they want to be known, for fruity and floral in their unpeated whiskies. And so this classic Lottie is actually a combination of barrels that are picked out to specifically have that flavor profile. So let's go ahead and give this a nose. <sighs> hmm, that smells really good. It does not smell like what you would expect because not everything on Isla has to be peated. You know, that's not a rule, it's just kind of the common thing that is there. And usually if you're dealing with Isla, you're gonna be dealing with peated whiskey, but when you're dealing with an unpeated whiskey, they're you know using the Scottish barley and just the, the way that they're distilling this and storing it, whatever, this is extremely 
flowery and it's very fruity and it's crisp and it's light and it's like, you know, I'd like to say that there's like kind of a maritimeness to it, but I'm not really getting it. However, I will say that that is a, a, a nosing and tasting note that I ran across in my research. I never really got that, so I'd be interested if you guys do pick up the salty air in this, but not doesn't do it for me. So, but the nose on this does do it for me. It's just very light and very pleasant. This is kind of something I could see just chilling out on the deck, you know, on a nice sunny day, relax and have some of this. So very, uh, very casual, wonderful smelling drink. Cheers. Hmm. And the flavor profile kind of follows it up. This is, you could almost compare this to a Speyside style whiskey, scotch, uh, in that it's it's very fruit forward, it's very sweet, and it's very, just very light and enjoyable and easy to drink. I would say some of the items, I actually should have been a little bit more clear on the nosing here. Um, let me let me go back to the nose here because I'm gonna kill myself with all these <laughs> icons here, but the nose I would say is you smell roses. Um, I did say floral, but I'm just gonna go roses. I'm gonna say pear and uh, probably green apples as well, as well as just kind of a general flowery springtime, not really grassiness to it, but it reminds me of the spring. Um, since I've had a sip already, I'm gonna do another one. Sorry for going out of order. I'm, I'm so embarrassed that I ruined my own structure here. Oh well. <laughs> totally don't care. All right, so the taste on this is very in line with the nose. It's pear, it's green apple, it is very sweet. Uh, it does have an interesting mouthfeel. It's, it coats it more than you would expect. At 50% ABV, you are not tasting really any of the alcohol here, so this is one that could get you in trouble. But this might be one to give to a whiskey drinker that does not or sorry, a newer whiskey drinker, somebody who does not necessarily like bourbons, uh, but wants to try something, this would be a really good one to start them on. Um, my overall on this, I, I, there's not a whole lot of tasting notes here. It's mostly just easy. Um, so it's interesting. If you guys have kind of tasting notes that you want to share in the comments, go for it. But for me, this one's more about just that general pleasantness that this gives you. It just is like a happy whiskey, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Light and just beautiful. So my overall here, um, this is a $50 scotch sold in the US for 50% ABV, $50 and scotch. The three of those together are usually a good sign. Now this is a very tasty whiskey, but it's not gonna blow your socks off either. This isn't gonna blow your mind. It's, it's something that you should probably buy once but I'm not confident that you'll buy it again. Um, it depends on what you're trying to get out of your scotches. So I would suggest this one as a buy it, and I think that will be probably a one, maybe two time purchase for yourself, uh, unless you really find that you love this, which I do. I mean, I've had this one for a little while, and I've purposely had to stop myself from finishing it off because I had to do this, <laughs> I wanted to do this review. The bottle's down to probably about here, but uh, it's a very good bottle. So um, suggest buying it. Anyway, so thank you for joining me here on this episode of the Whiskey Dictionary. If you're interested in another one of the scotches that I've reviewed a little while back, but one of my other personal favorites, check out the Oban 14 up here. And if you're curious what YouTube thinks that you should watch, go check it out over there. And if not, become a patron. Go check out the whiskeydictionary.com, go check out the patron page. There's a whole bunch of good stuff there, especially if you're looking to buy merch, you might actually get a better deal if you become a patron. So thank you everybody for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary and have a great rest of your night. Cheers.